Do not We're disrespect it. We're back, everybody. Don't disrespect it's the nose, It's disrespected man. nose, everybody. Yeah, it is. Martin, how are you doing today, mate? I'm good. Today, we're going to finish off the coilover install on Supergramps. Um, you might have seen the last episode, if you didn't click the doodle up here, that we installed some new Cusco, Cusco? I don't know, depends Cusco, where you're from. Um, coilovers from Japan. And um, look at that, Martin. They look good. Look at that. Nicely I'm looking set at up. The turbo. Um, but they're, they're looking awesome. But today, Martin, we're going to make it like a golf. We're going to add some technology, aren't we? We're going to add some technology. Now, they still need a wheel alignment, which will happen later. What we're installing, which we spoke about briefly last episode, is this Husco Econ thing that I got from Robert Import Monster in Japan. A um, whole lot of instructions that I don't really understand, although the pictures are really good, as always. I managed to find some English instructions. So this will be very, very helpful. This is the kit. Gets, I've only just worked out what was going on with this. What? I don't own this. I know. It's not mine. Just leave it over Someone there, lent Martin. it to me. That can just stay there. No, now it's even more obvious. I'm going to cover it with something. There. All right. Good. Stop looking at the thing. I wasn't. Martin, I was actually looking at our WD-40 stash over here. Proud sponsors of Mighty Car Mods. That's the automotive range. Look how much cool stuff there is. So handy. Look at that. Thank you very much, Martin. Back to what so you're doing handy. here. I'm just I'm so getting this all excited is, about the BMW that's coming. This is the Econ 2, and the idea is that there's these little motors that go in the top of the shock, and instead of adjusting using these little things that you'll often see on coilovers that have, like, ranges of adjustment, like in little. clicks, like some have, like, 15 levels. This feels like a lot more. Maybe it's, like, 40 or something. And the reason for that is that these motors basically replace these little knobs, and they go on there and then the wiring goes into the car and from the inside of the car you can adjust the um, firmness of your coilovers essentially. Is there a bracket that mounts this to this or to no, here? No, so it's, actually... it's got an M14 thread on here and that's oh, you why screw it looks it like on. a nut and you screw it on which is really cool and then these things go through a process where they like align themselves, wind the whole way one way, whole way other way and sort of calibrate. And they're running independently though, right? Yeah, all four run independently and there's some kind of active suspension stuff I think you can do with like an add-on kit which I don't have for this because I'm mostly interested in just going going to the track or the drags I want it firm driving to the shops I want it soft putting people in it whatever because there's nothing worse than getting in a car with like crazy hard coilovers yeah with your mates. it feels exciting for the first five minutes and then yeah. it feels and annoying then, and it just wears you and actually I find it fatiguing anyway so these will basically replace this little thing they'll go and get screwed on and then probably the biggest part of this job is running all the wiring it is you know that's why factory cars that have them it's super neat because it's all integrated into a loom we'll need to run wires down in through some of the holes because this car's been messed with fairly substantially there's quite a few places that we'll be able to run these looms but we are going to pull out most of the inside of the car to do so is it as simple muddy as getting four of these that goes on there this end here goes through to a controller that'll be inside the car yep that controller gets power from under the dash yep. and then that's it is, pretty much is, yeah. is, is that is that that's it, it. power because we might even finish it <laughs> no, 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 listen, Don't promise Martin. me. No, no, I'm not, but we might even finish it this video. Mightn't we? That would is be... that possible? Uh, is it? I don't even know. Is it? I would never promise that. Because we always say we're going to do stuff and we never finish it. Actually, that's not true. We always finish it. Do we except finish for the heaps of cars? We don't. Next, the problem is, well, as, as we say, project cars never finish. This car's finished, it works, it's fine. Yes. But can we make it better? Yes, we can, using these things. So the first step is going to be, according to these instructions, is to use some of the tools that come in the kit, which is here. It's got some of these horrible, I think they're called scotch locks or something, which we are absolutely not using that. Um, a lot of JDM kits give you these little things where you get it. You get a power wire and you put the power wire in there and then squish it and squish and it. The idea is that cuts through the insulation and that little blade in the inside makes a connection with the wire. Just People seems like, hate them, man. Oh, seems People like really a, hate them, but they come in a lot of kits. Seems like a recipe for disaster, but what they do have in them that's kind of cool as well is you can you can like repurpose some of the little bits of metal in there. We've also got some um, grease to make sure that the motors spin freely and don't seize up. Um, of course, because JDM, we've got double-sided tape because how course, else do you mount the stuff? It. Um, we'll have need to find somewhere to put the controller. Um, the controller doesn't also need to be front and centre either to keep the interior looking clean, so we might find a spot where it looks a little bit stealthy. And then over here behind you, we have the loom. So this is probably the most complex part of it, is all the different loom wires for the install. Um, that is, you've got one for each box, and you've got to run them front, back, Left and right. And to install them, Martin, we might even use some 
Mighty Carmod's cable ties. Wow, that one. They've been, that. they've been well and truly. Yeah, because we've been, we've been into, using them, man. Look at this. They say you Mighty can, Carmod's on them. You can Mighty Modify your car. Look That's at that cool. one. Look at it. I love this. Cable these tie skills. How many are in a packet? 50, 50 in a pack. And they're 50 in a packet. 4.8 mil wide and 250 mil. And we send long. them anywhere in the world. Do the doodle on the blip blip. Not the nipple, but the thing that's dropping down. Get on it. Uh, all right. So we're going to put all that together. Um, that you involves... want the interior out, man. Uh, I can do that. What? I can do that. Cool. I'll take the interior out. That's great. The reason for that is um, running this amount of wiring around the whole side of the car, like you can just flick up bits of plastic trim and try and sneak it all through. And if you've got a brand new car, maybe that's the way to go. But a brand new car would probably already do this from the factory. Put it away. No, I'm just showing put it, put everyone. Put it away. Man. I'm just going to... Don't throw it. Don't throw it. BMW people would get so angry. Would they? Yes. Ah! I'll use that later. Later. BMW people don't get angry. They're so relaxed because their seats like massage their butts while they drive, right? All Isn't the that... passengers do. <laughs> <laughs> so I think um, step one, we'll work out how to install these little motors. And step two, we'll run a bit of wiring. And step two and a half, we'll be pulling Will it be finished interior. today though, Martin? That's, that's all I'm interested in. Will it be finished today? I don't know. Well, well, how would I know? I guess this is disrespected nose, isn't it? Which means we never really know. Get out of the we nose. We never really knows. Get out right, of the nose. So um, I'm going to pull the interior out. Please. And Front and back seats, bit of carpet. Read the instructions. Sure. That sounds like a good idea. So the first step is to install the motor and work out how to do it. Now these are all exactly the same, so it's the same process for all of them. They give you a tool, which is like a little um, spanner, which goes over this thing. And then they give you a hex wrench thing that allows you to remove that. Now I think it goes that way and then like that and it removes the whole top yeah, of right. this is my understanding. Yeah, there it is. And then the shaft of the motor should look exactly the same as that. Oh, so that replaces that. It replaces it, yeah. But they're also asking to use thread locker. So we put thread locker on the outside of this thread. Um, but it also said test fit first. I mean, sure, let's do it. We're here. Um, if I get a little screwdriver and we turn that top one, we should actually feel it adjusting the damper. So, like that. Yeah, there it goes. That's cool. You can feel it adjusting the actual damper on the shock and that's just like a little, a little motor, essentially. Stepper motor. There it is. Cool. So that's going to work. The next step is to put some grease on the actual shaft of the motor and then some thread locker on the thread of this. Yeah. So they give you red thread locker and they give you some grease. Are you actually going to install it now for goodsies? Let's put the, yeah, let's just throw this one on, man. It's the same process for all of them, according to the manual. So a little bit of this stuff. Just on that. That's what they're saying. Makes sense, you don't want like water and rubbish getting down there, I suppose. And then a little bit of thread locker on the outside. And for people playing at home, does this only go on one way? This thing? Yeah. Yeah. They're all all the motors are identical and this is they're all the top of the shocks are all exactly the same. So I, I think it's actually pretty hard to mess it up. We'll throw some thread locker on here. Because obviously you don't want you don't want the motor spinning. So that goes on there, that goes on there, and then that. There it goes. That's an excellent it's, mod, Martin. It is, isn't it? It's like a neat, it's a really neat system. And considering this show is called Mighty Car Mods, <laughs> that's a mod. <laughs> and right I just want to check in the instructions, it says that they don't need very much torque, or I think it might even give you a reference of how far to turn it. So torque down the motor approximately 10 degrees from the stopping point. So that's, that's a really good way of doing it. So instead of a torque setting, we're just going to go like that and just give it the tiniest turn, boom, done. That's installed, and then we can just pull this rubber thing back over. It's a good opportunity, actually, to use some silicon That's like spray. That's two and a half minutes to install. Each motor, the hardest bit, I reckon, is running the wiring. That's, that's probably more tricky, but it is pretty neat. Um, this stuff is silicon lubricant, really good in this situation where you've got like rubber that's trying to bind up. Let's throw a little bit down there, and that'll That'll loosen that up so it slides slides right on down. And then that motor can, cover can go back over so that that little motor is not exposed to the elements because it's pretty hot and pretty dusty. 
in this engine bay. Bang. There it is. Flip that rubber boot over. That's really cool, man. And you might remember last episode in the back, remember we had to remove that little bracket? Yeah. That little bracket thing. So we were going to have to, that's to clear the top to of these motors. To clear the top of these little motors, yeah. And that is looking pretty good. Pretty sure you can get these for just about any car too, which is pretty mad. Very cool, go. man. That's neat, hey. That's really neat. And so now we've got to find a way. So we'll go from the inside out in terms of getting wiring because we don't want a bunch of wiring caught up in here. Yeah. So we'll pull some stuff from the inside and then run the wiring back up, sneak it behind here. Do you want me to get a hole saw, Martin, or are you going to use an existing bung? <laughs> I think there's an existing one for our Haltec loom and some of our other stuff down here under this um, under this rubbish. There is uh, a spot. Actually, just down under the clay, uh, the clutch master cylinder, there's a, there's a hole that all the... Um, temperature sensors are running through that we'll be able to use for this stuff as well. So we'll run that through. So probably use the same one for both sides, go across and under because the control box will probably live just down there under the center console. Yeah. So um, I reckon we start ripping the interior out, throw well, another motor. Why don't on. you install that one? I'll pull the interior out and nice. then I'll meet you back here in the click of a finger it might be done like this. Or the camera's just still rolling which was awkward and now I'll pull the interior out. I find it really, really interesting that this technology had come out in the aftermarket, but I don't know of cars in the 90s that would have had this unless we're talking super high-end like Beamers or Mercedes or something. Like it's, yeah. it's always interesting to, to think about who was actually the first to it and who copied who. Yeah. Because I don't know that Japanese aftermarket coilover company invented adjustable dampening, electronically adjustable dampening. Someone will know. There'll be someone out there that knows, hey. Well, a lot of that stuff just... It's options on really high-end cars, and then, I mean, look, it's, didn't Mercedes-Benz invent the airbag, and now they come in a Yaris? Um, is your battery disconnected? Yep. Can I help just move your seat forward? Yep, here you go. So this here is a little battery tap. Uh, you can get these from Super Cheap Auto. We did a whole episode on installing these. Really quick, really easy. You can blip, 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 basically turn it on and turn it off so that every time you're kind of working on your car instead of needing to take uh, the strap on and off, you can just undo that. And it's also good if your car's in storage because yep. you can just um, turn it off. And if your car has a parasitic loss and you don't know where it's coming from, obviously you want to fix that, but if you don't know where it's coming from, you can just put your car in a safe place, go bloop, 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 bloop. And then when you want to drive it again, you go bloop, 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 bloop. Alrighty. What oh, are you doing? One. What are you doing? I'm, I'm doing the most efficient install possible because now that there's lunch on the table... You want to get to lunchtime as quickly as possible. I'll do it from the inside. Tell me when this comes through, mate. Just keep your eyes there near the fuel line. That's the aircon line. No. <laughs> over here, mate. Oh, all this shit. Down here. Down there. Over there. Over there. Right there. Pretty sure that's a clutch line. Right there, mate. Well, Just that's there. the brakes. Just near there. There's some catch can oh, lines. Just near. Ah, because not factory. Just. Can we just. Can we. Near can there. we just not holes? Can you just not hole saw my car? There, Martin. Can you just not hole saw my car? Just. Do you just feel the need to hole saw something? No. Because there's some wood over there you can hole saw. No. Right, just keep your eye on that side, Martin. Just don't hit the Haltech because I really need that. So for the back, it's the same process with these little motors, except there's a whole lot of inside in the way, which I'm hoping I don't have to go full JDM style and just chop. Um, I think that is going to fit though. Just, just, man, there's only just enough room to get them on, hey, with all where the, the side of the car is. Yep. But I've got to pull the little adjuster out, mess with the little Allen key bolt thing that's in there, and then stick these motors on. But otherwise, I think that should be relatively painless. Cool. Get and then some run the wiring. Yep. Subaru sun cream, man. Really? Yeah. What I do think you use that for? when you go to the beach. Really? Yeah. A smashed up Supergrams wheel cap. Can't remember how that got scratched up. Oh, what were you implying you should use the sun cream for? Oh, no, but this is like sun cream. In, oh, that would make sense if you had a convertible. Like if you had MX-5 sun cream, you'd go, yeah. that makes sense. But Subaru don't make any convertibles, do they? No, but the point is people with Subarus have really like fulfilling fun lives. They spend lots of time like outdoors doing fun stuff and you need your sun cream. If you go outdoors so you don't get sunburn in a harsh Australian climate. Dude, could you obtain me a 10 mil? That might be difficult, yeah. being that it's a 10 mil. Do you want it on a JDM Dackel or do you just want a little No, just dackle? a ratchety or a German Bendy would be fine. Maybe if the dashes are turning white in the sun, Martin, 
they should have used the Subaru Zung Crane. Well, that would have been smart. Maybe someone should tell them that someone could be us. But there's plenty of people with this model Subaru that have wrecked dashes. But they've been doing recalls, like, good on them, they've been doing recalls, even though the cars are, you know, pushing 10 years old. Well, actually, all these, these cars are at least 10 years old now. Um, they still were replacing them, which I think is really cool. Look at that, mad. I didn't even know that came out. That's really cool. This car, these things just snap, snap out, which is good, but can be bad when they decide to not snap out, like one of the back ones that was disagreeing with me. But must be very fast to assemble at the factory, you know. Pump it all together, because that snaps into that, which snaps into that thing. Like so. Like that. Cool. So we don't necessarily need to pull the carpet completely out, but I want it, I want it free around all the edges so we can fold the whole lot back yep. um, and run the wiring. You know, do you know yet whether you're going to run wiring down the middle or down the sides? Um, don't know yet. Um, we need to run some new wiring for fuel pump as well, so that's some pretty significant wiring. But passenger side makes the most sense because it's where all the ECU is. Yep. Um, the control box, I think we're just going to put right up in the middle on top of the ABS unit because there's a whole lot of space there that will never be taken up by stereos or anything else. And then um, we should put some stereo wiring in this. It's a good idea, Martin. This is called scope creep, isn't it? When yeah. everything just gets a bit more crazy. Anyway, while the carpet's out, maybe we'll do that. Uh, and then the control box and then the little controller, which I don't know where that's going to go because I don't need it right in my face all the time and I don't want the dash cluttered. So we might make a decision about that once it starts to go back together. That's what we're looking for. Get the carpet out of the way so that we can sort of run wires and stuff exactly where we need to. Yep. That interior ruining our day. <laughs> there, all the foam stuck to the floor. That's a bit gross. I didn't know this carpet's been out before. I think it went to the paint shop with carpet in it. So, yeah, it makes sense. Oh, look, it's definitely not mine. That's pre previous owner. Hey, Al. No, our like pink Mentos. Cool. All right, so we can see here where all our wiring is running down the side, plus a bunch of clips and other stuff that we can rescue. So we're going to run our wiring all the way from the front down here. Maybe we'll put a cable tied on, and then down to the little motor. So my English instructions have failed me in terms of the wiring. So there's a whole page here in the Japanese instructions with wiring, and I've been able to take a photo of it, which is very very helpful. Um, up here it's just saying that's the control box, that's the display roughly where you need to put it. Uh, but what I wasn't sure about was we had a few different um, cables here with different markings and numbers on them and different colours. Uh, but down here it says when you translate it, it says yellow tape separate tape equals control harness 4 metres and black identification table equals control harness 5 metres. And that's enough to understand that what they're saying is there's a five meter loom, which will be for the rear, and that's an R on it, so that'd be right hand side, and then a five meter loom for the left hand side for the back, and they're the ones we're interested in at the moment. This is the control box as well that we'll install just in the car somewhere right in the middle that's easy to get to, and then run the wiring to it. Here, sort of on top of the ABS module, there's a bit of space around it, so that'll be easy to get cables in and out. Um, we'll tidy up a little bit of the wiring in here, but that will be a nice central spot for it. Right, about. You hate it when you double-sided tape, prematurely tapes. So, right about there. What is it, Martin? I don't know. But there's the usual assortment of wrappers and corn chips and a bit of money, but I have no idea what that is. That is, that is, or how it got down there. It's glistening, which is the worst thing. What is that? What is it? Give me a look, Martin. Why is it, why is it glistening in the light? 20 more cents for lunch, although that, I don't know that I'll accept that one. We should at least clean all the grot out. I'm going to vacuum it. I'm going to use my, my stick vac. I've got the stick vac. Oh, the new stick vac. It's, it's huge. It looks like, it actually looks like an alien ship. Like imagine, dur, 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 dur. like that's what I think when I see it. And you've unless got you it put, in the short version. Unless you put a brush on it. It's got, it's got an actual stick. Oh yeah, it's a stick vac, isn't it? And then it's got like a brush thing as well, which might come in handy, but 
I like I like the accuracy of these kind of things for my stick vacuuming. That's very good. It's so like brushless, bagless thing. Pretty cool. Full disclosure, they're sponsors of the show also, Martin. They are. Because we use and love also this bendy light here. And but we've been using this stuff for years, years this and is, years and years. This is going to make some noise, but I mean, all good vacuums should because if they don't make noise, then they're generally not sucking enough. Yes. Now is the time with the carpet out that any other wiring that needs to go under the carpet like stereos, in our case fuel pump, that's a 25 amp wire. I'm going to run two of them down to the back. It is overkill but again it saves pulling all the carpet out. It's going to use the exact same path as everything else we've done so far. Going to run it from where all the Haltec gear is and the relays and everything else that runs the fuel pump down into the seat area which is where the fuel pump hanger is. These wires should actually come through without too much of a fight because there's already some old unused wiring in there and I can get to the rubber bung here pretty easily. Oh yeah. So um, I'm just gonna... Oh yeah, I can feel you on that end of it. Can you see daylight through there? Uh, I can't see daylight, but I can feel you tugging it. Oh, well do you wanna just grab, grab the big black one and just pull on it as hard as you can? Is it ready to go now? Yeah man, straight through the hole. Just keep yanking on it, it'll eventually come out. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna hold it there for a sec. I'm just going to feed the big red tipped one through yep. the hole. Just tell me when it's about to come because there's a little, um, there's like a, a little slit here that you've cut through the firewall and uh, I don't yeah. want to, if it's really big, I don't want to tear this. Yeah, no, fair enough. It's got, um, I've got the big red tipped one, but I've also got the, the other two that I've taped to the side of it. Oh yeah, I can see you coming in there now. Yeah, so I reckon if I just sort of, if I get that, this, this rubber's really, really tight. I've just got to sort of roll it back. Well, maybe what would be easier for me is as I pull it through, yep. if you can just kind of use your fingers to push the end in from your end and then I know it won't tear on this side. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. I've just almost got it through the rubber. It's really, really tight, but I'm also trying to put so many different things through one rubber. It's almost through. Oh, dude, silicon, of course. Idiot. There you go. All right. Just lube that up a bit. Oh, dude, massive difference. Okay. Um, can you also see a little white one in there? Like I it's can. Like, uh, yeah, I can. You can get rid of that, man. I don't need that at I'll all. I'll come in. My, okay, cool. So I'm going to pull back. That's gone, skis. Oh. It's a bit gross, isn't it? Cool. All that white stuff can go. I'm going to pull back the original one that was in there. Yep. I'm going to tape on the new one, which because I just covered it in like silicon spray lube is probably not going to stick that well, but I'm going to wrap heaps and heaps and heaps of tape around the base of it. Yep. And that should make it actually stay together when it goes through. So just slowly pull on that one. All right, I'm starting to pull it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, sorry. Yep, give it a bit of a yank. Yep. Okay. Um, is that going through the, the slit Yeah, thing? can you just use your fingers in the hole as well? There you go. Is that helping? Yep. Right. Uh, it's come through, yep, it's all in my hand now. Cool, man, just yank it as hard as you can. I am trying to pull it, but it's, I think it's stuck. How can you, can you that, push some more into it? Is that any better? Just push into me more. like Yeah, go, go. Like that. Yep. Oh, that's it. Cool. Can you see it now? Yeah, I've got, I've got both hands around it now. All right, so just hold there. Yep. Um, can you, where I've taped it onto the original one, are you able to untape that now? Yeah, there's a lot of it, man. Yeah, there's so much. It's all a good five metres dangling out the end. Mad. Pull through the power and the coil levers. Perfect. Thanks, man. That'll do. Now these go out to each of the... Plugs, mad, left and right, cool. So the cable's through, we found a really neat spot here on the firewall where there's a plug that was also getting used for the temperature sensors for each cylinder, there's three on each side. Um, we've also got power wire for stereo stuff, which while we're here it makes sense to pull it all through. And this is the four meter right, so as you're sitting in the car it's on the right hand side. So all we do now is plug that in. And bang, motor controller. And what we'll do is we'll pull that cable back through. Now there's, there's an abundance of cable. There's just way too much. Um, but it makes more sense to have that on the inside of the car under some carpet where you're never going to see it again rather than hanging around in the engine bay looking all Is it this one? That um, one? Nope, this or one. this one? Yep, that one. You can cool. pull tell, that through a bit tell more. Tell me when to stop, man. Yep, good. All good? Perfect, yep. Cool. And just like that, 
It looks pretty neat. Use some of the existing loom and cable tie this on. Like, it's really neat, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. It's good. Not bad. Like, you know, every aftermarket thing you add adds, adds so much wiring and bulk, and that's just it's just all part of it. But that's okay. Don't mind when it looks super neat. Front is done, wired in. Also ran that extra power wire that I've been meaning to do for ages. Um, I'm just gonna also leave this other power line that I've got hanging around in here because while we're pulling everything through, it's way neater just to do it in one go. So that's done also. And we're looking pretty good. So now we just gotta attach the motors at the back. What do you reckon that was? Something that we needed. Mm. Oh yeah, it's a nut for the strut brace. So now we need to attach the motors at the back and run the wire from the driver's side down to the back of the car. All the wiring is in for the shocks, which is actually a huge dob by the time you get it from the from all four corners of the car and then into the middle. Yeah, and neatly. similar to wiring in a stereo though, four yeah, speakers. exactly, which is why I ran that stereo wiring at the same time because might as well. So now it's a matter of connecting these motors, doing the same trick with their little special spanner. Yep. Which is under this trim. You could take the trim off entirely, but it's actually quite involved from last time I did it. And so basically these motors will go on and will show the people a shot of one going on. Yep. And then the interior goes back in. The interior goes back in. That's and, the little con and the little controller at the front. That's right. Powered. Plug in the little screen. Yeah, that fits good, man. So there's a little Allen key bolt, Allen bolt. Yep. That's in the middle of this thing, which you have to take out. I'm not sure actually why they get you to take it out. They get you to take it out, yeah. grease it, and then put it back in eight turns. Oh. But when you take it out, it's already been greased. So I don't know if that's like old instructions or my instructions are just not quite right. I feel like that's something that might have changed yeah. in recent times. But either way, that little bolt there, yeah, okay. we throw some grease onto it from their special stash and then wind it back in, wind it in eight turns, attach the motor and that's that. Five, six, seven, eight, bang. Nice, good one. And then, man. lock tight, they say. Thread locker, whatever you want to call it. Some thread lock and then on he goes. On he goes. That's the room off. Only just fits far out, man. That's close. It's really close. Just the wiring just almost um almost, almost fails. fails. It, yeah. yeah. So that's now snug, and then they said 10 degrees, which is like almost nothing. That's about 10 degrees, mate. There we go. 10 degrees. And they're on. And so they're saying in the instructions that, you know, that fails, so we do a little choppy chop out of there. Yep. And plug this in, like so. And I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of hide this wiring up under the trim because really nothing ever happens up under there anyway. Yep. Um, the only thing you gotta be careful when you do something like this is with rattles. But a lot of this has padding like all over it, so the chance of rattles is probably pretty low. Cool. In this case. Just to hide it up and out of the way. Very good, Martin. So we do this side, Same five shots side. of the interior going in. Yep. Happy days. And next time you see us, we will be configuring our MAD coilover control. All right, so all the wires are in now, Marty. You can solder them up. There's only three wires, super simple. Just gonna grab them from behind the stereo and then the screen will work. Well, Martin, that's all done. Mad. I suggest we go for a drive. So if you press up, you can then adjust the front shock or the rear shock individually. So it's flashing R for rear. So you can go up or down. Or you can do presets, which is where you use the stop button and you've got one, two, three, and four settings. And that will just wind the shot completely in either direction, depending on whether you want to go hard or soft. It's, now if I go back this way, it'll wind it completely the other direction. And that's how you fine tune it. And you can fine tune the front and rear differently if you want as well, like that. Rear and then front, whatever you want to do. Sets the front to different settings. And you can adjust all that while you're driving. Well, Martin, well done. Yeah. That was a successful install. Yep. We've got our mad little uh, controller down here now. It's, it's and, pretty hard to use, I'm going to be honest. But it, it feels soft at the moment. It does. It defaults to a soft setting. You can go in and customise 
each shock and settings front and back and stuff, but there's also just four default ones, is yes. my understanding. So I'm just going to change it up to, I don't know how you're going to, oh, before we get to this. Oh, not that one, not that one, not that one. You just make it stiff up, feels like that you That one. That one. This is only going 11, 11, 12, not 20, 40. Oh, press the stop button in the middle instead. There you go. And again, no, don't press anything but the stop button. Okay, good. There you go. Because I think you might have just changed one side or something. <laughs> oh, good. No, I put it back to normal. Okay, this is now on its hard setting. So, this is, I know. Can you tell on a roundabout? I don't know. It's more, it's probably more tell more in um, little bumps and stuff on the road, like when you hit sticks or a little, how good is that? That's when you how that's kind of this yeah, speed yeah, up, you'll how... sort of feel that it's a little bit stiff and more stiff. Oh, you can tell on the, um, going over the bricks and the pavers, this is now on its soft. And if you listen carefully, you can hear the little motors Yeah, going. you can hear the motors go. And now, yes, yeah. I feel a difference. And yeah. the whole the whole point as well is like, whenever we used to go to the drags in this or the racetrack, I'd always have to get out and stiffen up each corner. And that involves pulling some trims out in the back. You stiffen then, up on each corner? Yes. Yeah, oh, because the car looks so every good. corner, exactly. Yeah. And so you go to the track and you do that. And the, the idea with this was also to prevent too much springy weight transfer backwards, which is when I snapped that drive shaft, I'd forgotten to stiffen up the coilovers. Every other time we'd be the drags, probably for like a good 30 runs in the yeah, same right. configuration, yeah. I had had no dramas with it doing that, and then yeah. you could see it sort of pogoed. So yeah. the point now is I can go to the drags or, the, or whatever the track and just hit the button four yes. times, full stiff. Pogoing around, get it nice and stiff, yeah. try now, not to snap the shaft. Max stiffness, exactly. Yeah. Well, man, I mean, there it is. Like, that's the thing. Oh, Super Gramps sounds so good. It does, doesn't it? Sounds like a dirty taxi that's mated with a Porsche. You know, you know what way. I mean? Yeah, but on like a, a nice romantic. Yeah, in, in a, in a, on a nice night out. This is a little controller down here. So basically this here is changing. I mean, it's all a little bit 20 years ago. Um, yeah. And so I think my attitude towards that is that it's a cool thing. But it's probably a cool thing of a time. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love how your fuel light's on because you're E85 and you've never got any fuel. No, it's because the next thing we're going to do in this is change the fuel pump. Have you oh. ever changed a fuel pump with a full tank of fuel? That sucks. I have. I have. So I've been, in my, in my golf. Yeah. Yeah. So I've um I've made sure that we're we're going right down to the line. Anyway, there it is. If you are interested, and even if you weren't, there it was. You've just seen it. Uh, thank you for watching the show. There's more Super Gramps coming up. Yep. Uh, and then, of course, we're diving into some Yaris and a couple of other projects that you guys don't know about yet that are going to be hitting your eyeballs, earballs, and um, associated uh, paraphernalia of your body. Um, if you want to support the show, of course, you can do that by going to mightycarmoz.com. Um, we don't use like third parties to ship our stuff. It's shipped you know, by us and our mates from here in Australia, everywhere in the world. It's not like, you know, underneath a lot of YouTube videos, you just click a thing and some random company does it. We're actually still doing that ourselves and you can get things like our awesome new Mighty Car Mods dash towel for protecting your dash or take them to the gym or take them to the beach. Or you could even use that at an onsen mutton if you needed to protect your man parts or female or parts. Lady parts. You um, anyway, you can get them from the Mighty Mod shop. Thanks for watching. And it's time for us to go and get some legumes, Martin. Because we, you and I are going to begin a plant-based diet for one week. Get out. What? Get out. Really?